I'd just like to introduce um, Jonathan Alexander, who's the operations engineer from Alamo. Oh, I need that. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jonathan right. Alexander, and I'm the operations engineer at our uh, Albemarle's HPC, or Hydro Processing Catalyst Unit. And I'm going to kind of share with you our whole um, journey of this big data problem and kind of, you know, what are the, uh, the feet on the ground approach with, with the operators, the people that are actually doing the work, you know, how are we getting them to, to drive the value and improvements? So a quick summary about Albemarle, if you're not familiar. We actually have uh, three different business units, uh, lithium and performance chemicals, and then I'm in the uh, refining solutions business unit. So we make uh, FCC, which is fluid catalytic cracking, and HPC, which is the, uh, the product that I make, hydro processing catalyst. And so these are used in the refinery simply to take your crude oil in and then filter it out into all your different, you know, gasoline, jet fuel, diesel, all the different byproducts. So every refinery would uh, use our product. So raise of hands, anybody here feel like they're nonstop firefighting and can't prevent, uh, you know, can't really get ahead to, to fix problems. Anybody? Nobody? This was my typical Monday. So I'd come in and, you know, you come in from the weekend where on Friday you left and you fixed all the problems from the previous week. And then you arrive Monday morning and you're like, oh my gosh, what have they done? And you start looking at all the different trends and all the different quality analytics and start saying, well, we should have fixed this here. We should have fixed this here. And, and then the whole week, I'm trying to play catch up, putting out those fires that were started over the weekend. So then is how do we get away from uh, creating the fire in the first place? And I'll show you how we did that. So this is where we were stuck at. You know, we're the cavemen pulling the, uh, the wheelbarrow on some square wheels. And you had this opportunity behind you with the, the round wheels to make the barrel go faster but you're just too busy to really get started. And we were just in this perpetual state of, of being too busy, not enough time to, to really do anything better. So your job is just to survive, just to put out the fire and wait for the next one to arrive. So when we started our big data issue, um, or you know, trying to tackle this, I presented this slide to our operators saying, this is our goal. You know, our goal is to uh, center the process, tighten improved control limits, and all of that you know, summed together to better meet our customer requirements. You know, making a better product, uh, you know, any of you that are in uh, uh, production or operations can see that the, the first two left uh, ones versus the right, you, know, you all want to drive towards that right. And you can see probably examples in your head of, Hey, I know of lots of different pieces of uh, various processes that will drive lots of different value. If I can get my, all of my quality parameters to this right uh, you know, slide where I'm meeting my customer requirements every single time, you know, simple Six Sigma principles. But one of the things we try to do differently at uh, HPC is the, the goal was to take all these complicated graphs, all these complicated statistics, and simplify them down to the operator level to where you make it black and white, you know, good or bad, red or green, Pac-Man or not Pac-Man. And so the, you know, we, we presented lots of charts to our operators and, and a lot of times they struggled and they would, they would not really be able to interpret all the noise. And I saw lots of different charts and I couldn't really interpret the noise. So how do we get to something that tells us, hey, you need to do something right now. You know, how do we take all that complicated data and get it something simple, you know, that black, white, good, bad, red, green, Pac-Man, not Pac-Man. So we started out uh, and we used uh, Northwest Analytics as our kind of, um, uh, as our software of choice to tackle our big data problem. And so this is uh, us pulling in all of our quality data and taking all this complicated thing and trying to get it from here using their uh, software and the statistics kind of running in the background and simplify it to that black, red, or black, white, green, red, good, bad approach. So from that, we built our very first operational dashboard. And so this is the very first one that we relayed to the operators that is still current in, currently in use 
has been improved upon you know, over time. But this was the goal. So all of that data that you saw is simplified into here. And so if you have a red thing, you can go drill down into what the problem is, and you can you know, go correct it at that moment. Or if you have one that has a, a, it's a green box with a red outline, that means it used to be in control, but now it's fixed. So as an engineer, I can go back and see, hey, how has my operations team been fixing my problems for me without me having to do anything myself? So one of the things that we drove from this is, is going from uh, you know, all that complicated data to eliminating that and, and making it simple. And so we used to, on Monday morning, they would have, uh, we'd get printouts from the lab. You know, we use uh, LIMS as our lab uh, software. And so we'd have all these like printouts from every single analytic that we would get. And we would set them out, you know, on this long table. And we would go through, and they would have handwritten notes on every single one with like highlights and circles. And you try to like, you know, every engineer and the, the superintendents and the managers would go through and try to like, you know, paint a picture, right? Tell a story with all these different pieces of paper and you wouldn't get very far and it'd be kind of hard. And every handwritten note is written differently and has a different approach. And so we wanted to take all that and eliminate it and put it into a place where you can get it and, and all that data and all of that information and all of those notes are in one compact solution that is simple to use, not only in, in my uh, you know, office or in the control room with the operators, but managers using it or upper management, you know, executive leadership. So this is one of our first charts that we use. And you can see here that uh, the goal is to correct a problem before it becomes you know, going out of spec, right? And so normally, when we would see something kind of elevate outside of this you know, upper control limit, it we wouldn't fix it because it's still well within our spec. You can see our USL or the upper spec limit at the top. We would, we would just wait and say, hey, it, it, the paper says it's in spec, we're OK. But because of the statistics saying, hey, something's different, we were able to react and say, hey, we're going to fix this. Maybe we need to change a filter cloth, or you have a control valve sticking, or something like that. And then, boom, back down in control. And then you had something else, something uh, hit, and then, boom, back down instantly in control. And so you'll see in the next uh, pictures that these just kind of keep reoccurring. And as you tackle one problem, they just kind of compound on each other. So we actually started out, and we, uh, we use Pi OSI uh, soft um, as well. And we use uh, both tools kind of uh, interchangeably, and they kind of like connect together, and then we use them independently as well. But this is what we gave our uh, operators at first, is, is a Pi dashboard, right? So we, we gave all this information, and this is some of the charts that I would use, probably maybe like 10 to 20% of what I have in my own dashboard in my office. You know, just so much data. And I'm expected every Monday to come in, and even on the weekends a lot of times, and, and look at these and try to pinpoint the nuances and figure out, say, hey, we need to do this now. And then what we try to do is roll this out to the operator level, but it didn't really catch on. And it was hard to drive uh, improvements and hard to get the operators really uh, involved in, in know when there's a problem. And it was really hard to instruct them, when this squiggly goes this way, you need to do this. You know, it, was, it was just kind of difficult. So taking that complicated data, we wanted to go back to that Pac-Man approach, you know, making it red and green, black, white, good or bad, simple. And so we had to you know, do something creative. So that's not only a, a new thing, but also something that's going to be meaningful or drive value. And so when, when looking at all these charts, you know, there's so many data points out there that you can't just solve all the problems at once. So you really had to think about how you're going to tackle each kind of uh, area and say, what's the best one for that process? You know, what's, what's going to get me the biggest return on my investment? And then figure out a way to make that complicated thing simple, whether it's through modeling or, or something like that. So what I did is we started to uh, go into implementing, uh, you know, 24 or we were using 24-hour lab data. So that's that's basically uh, you know every time you you submit your batch and you get your results and say okay how how good did I do in the past 24 hours? And then if you had a good 24 hours, you said well I did good. If you had a bad 24 hours, it was the shift before that you know caused those problems. And so well, what I started to do is is 
you know, what are the points that are driving those 24-hour numbers? You know, how do you put those together? And we started looking at the one-hour instances of like individual process parameters. And so when I first plotted those, I got this chart. And this is like a temperature thing, and I plotted it over one day. And this is, uh, you know, one of our process data. So it's taken, uh, you know, a point every 10 seconds. And I was like, oh, well, I guess this, you know, software doesn't really work to solve my problem. But there's uh, other ways around it. And so, well, I'll get back to this. So, yeah, this is the slide. So what I had to do, and I like this quote, kind of illustrates my thought process, is Albert Einstein, if I had an hour to solve a problem, and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. But once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. And this is what I, we did time and time again, is to sit back and say, you know, we would spend normally an hour fighting this fire. But if we spent 55 minutes kind of analyzing the fire, it might be a quick, you know, five minute fix. And then now we understand how to never have that fire get caused, you know, again in the future. So I took all that, uh, that uh, complicated data, and the way that uh, I tried to make it and simplify it is basically modeling all the different parameters and, and, and going through and creating kind of formulas and saying, hey, you know, when this temperature is above 100 degrees and my pressure is above 60 PSI, that means my process is on. Because I don't want to give them some kind of alarm that's going to be going on when the process is down. And then it's just another nuisance. Or, hey, if my, uh, my tank level is above 15% you know, and below 90%, that tells me something about my process where if something happens and the process goes out of control, the operator has to act now. So we took all those complicated things and then simplified it into real-time control dashboards. And so you see the one on the left is the original one that we started out with. And then here we come to the, the right and all these simplified ones. And these are the ones we're using right at this moment. And I can go into my, uh, into my hotel room and I can pull these charts up and say, you know, in less than a couple minutes, see how my plant is running right at this moment and get an overview of, of how they've been, uh, you know, controlling the plant while I'm off at this conference. So here's an example of the one hour data. We have a density meter and you can see how the density kind of was uh, out off of target. And then there's like a little comment box, a little bookcase. It means that the operator did something. And he wrote a note in there. And he did something, and then boom, within a couple hours, you're back in, in control, and then very quickly back on target. This density would have plagued us just uh, for hours and days and uh, at a time, where I would leave on Friday, and it'd be OK. And then something happened over the weekend, and I come back on Monday, and it's three days this density has been out of spec and causing you know, poor quality things. And so finding those, those little pieces that really drive those, uh, those final product um, you know, improvements, we did that just you know, this instance and multiple instances, and that's how you drive the value. So here's another example of an inline quality analyzer, where you know, it kind of went out of control, and then we did something to fix it, went back out of control, we did something to fix it again, and then it went out of control some more. And so not every time we fix it do we get it within the first hour. So it's kind of learning over time, you know, developing a conversation, asking the right people, and using the operator's experience to really fix these problems. But this was a huge one that would cause, this is uh, like tons of, of out of spec material. And ever since uh, plotting this, we haven't had a problem with this uh, ever since. So one of the things that uh, we really like about the NWA software is they have um, an acknowledge box, right? So when you have an alarm, the operator gets to go in, select it, and say what the assignable cause is, so what caused the problem, and then what the correct, corrective action is. You know, what do they do to fix it? And that was really the key that made the big difference, because in the past, they would just acknowledge alarms. So we have tons of alarms you know, on our DCS uh, that just continually go off on and on and on. And we actually had this uh, visual alarm uh, in our control room that has duct tape over it, you know, because it was lighting up so frequently and it didn't add any value. And so the operators just put duct tape over it. And so we really had to figure out if, if something alarms, they need to, one, know why it's alarming, and then they have to do something about it to fix it so it doesn't happen again. And when we started trying to figure out, okay, well, what are the corrective actions? 
uh, and what are the causes of our process variability? We didn't really know the answer. And so what we did is, is we used this open comment field to drive improvements. And so we just instructed the operators to say, hey, we, we need you to input uh, whatever uh, you, know, you think the problem is, and then use that to kind of drive conversations and, and talk to them and say, hey, you know, why do you think this is the issue? And, and what, am, what am I missing? And, and I, over time, we just kind of put things together. And then we get to a place where we have all those listed. Now, sometimes the, the open comment fields have problems where you see like the operator wrote Z or ZZ or working on it, you know. And those are times where you know, might think that they don't really care. But a lot of these, they didn't really understand what to put. So there's a real big gap in our process knowledge that we had to address through training uh, that this uh, you know, platform made visible. And then over time, we developed corrective actions you know, that are drop down. So when something happens, we can pinpoint exactly what the, the problem is. So what are the results? You know, uh, it, immediately after implementing this, we went 18 straight months with uh, zero out of spec product, first time in 40 years. And then since then, we had something, uh, we've been 17 straight months since then. We had one out of spec thing that just went you know, slightly out of spec, and it's an equipment problem that we need a big uh, capital investment to fix it. So nothing outside of our, uh, you know, uh, capability. So one of the big things, $650,000 of uh, working capital reduction over the past three years. And so that's uh, because of increasing production rates, improving utilization, uh, less unexpected startups and shutdowns, more consistent quality, uh, much less downtime. And the biggest thing we've got, gathered is improved process knowledge. So very quickly, I'm going to illustrate kind of a uh, uh, just a lot of different pictures that you know, illustrate our results better. And a, a, I think a, a picture is worth a thousand words. So I'm just going to scroll through these very quickly, and I think you'll get it. So before and after, this is intermediate product control, before and after. And all these are different products, different, uh, different specs, different control limits. Before and after. before and after. All this is intermediate product. So this is where that one hour drives value. Before and after. This is final product. This is what we're selling to our customers. So before and then the gradual shift downward. Taking the mean and centering it on top. <coughs> before, after. And the software actually doesn't fix our process. All of our processes are being fixed by the conversation that the software just kind of you know, highlights, right? Just gives you a platform for discussion, for improvement, visualization. So huge improvement. So you remember our slide that I showed the operators at the beginning? This was, uh, I showed them this three years ago. Before and after, that was our goal. You know, how do you think we did? And uh, I shared the, this with the operators recently, and they were just uh, you know, shocked. And then instantly, once I shared, and they, they kind of understood, they just started having all these extra ideas. Well, I have another idea how to improve this area. And so all of the, the stuff that I used to do as a process engineer, I've kind of like stepped down to the operator level. And now they're taking my old role and, and pushing it and developing it. And, and, really drive an improvement themselves. And so I can step back and, and take a bigger picture approach and really drive improve, improvement projects. So you know, just to say what, what's on the horizon for us, EMI is limited, so, uh, or limitless. Maintenance dashboards, so you can put up pump vibrations, uh, motor amps, scrubber DPs, executive level dashboards for OEE, yield, availability. And we're even working on a safety dashboard that's going to trend near misses, so you have, you know, Normally, you have 10 near misses for hand injuries. And this quarter, you have 20. And what is driving that? Maybe I need to drive some training so that I don't have some type of uh, recordable injury. And then I, have a, uh, I even believe in the dashboard so much that I have my own personal home dashboard that has like you know, my kitchen, my pool, and master bedroom that I, I, I believe in the system. And it works. you know. And so I just kind of downloaded this app recently. So what are some quick lessons learned? Uh, continual training for the operators, 
uh, using the assignable cause corrective actions to drive improvement, drive operator development and training, and get the operators involved. They're going to surprise you. You know, so something that we're focusing on now is, is one of the big initiatives for 2017 is this push to la la land is what we call it. And it's going to somewhere where no one's been before. And so we're driving not only just one hour improvement, but being able to start up the plant instantly and have our product be on spec and then coming down whenever and, and making the, you know, the exact amount of product that we need, keeping inventory uh, levels low, doing uh, smaller, smaller batch quantities so that we can uh, you know, reduce working capital. And this is the push to, to take it to this place that's never been gone before. You know, I, I frequently spent time thinking, uh, trying to think outside the box. So I would, I would shut my office door, block off time on my schedule to really dedicate time to uh, driving this improvement. And I made this philosophy that I wanted no more phone calls on the weekend. And so every time I got a phone call, it's like I failed the, preparing the operators. And so I would write down all the, uh, the times I got phone calls on nights and weekends, and how do I prevent that phone call again in the future? And then the biggest lesson learned is, is pushing everyone to be proactive and not reactive. Thank you.